So St. Salim was established in 2010 and ever since we've been growing as a brand. So it started off as a passion from my private school days. I was collecting wool and perfumes. And then in 2009, 2010, I started blending a few ingredients together and realized there's a market there. And then also the Arabian influence of um, Oud, Atar was just entering the West. So I can definitely say we were one of the pioneers of this and we were definitely one of the you know, starters of bringing Oud and Arabian fragrances into the Western market. Our unique selling point at St. Salim has to be two things. Number one is the range we have. We can definitely say there's not many shops in the UK or even Europe who has over a thousand fragrances to offer, including natural ingredients. And the second part is we actually source most of the ingredients directly ourselves. So if you look at our social media platforms, if you read about St. Salim, you will realize that a lot of our products have been sourced directly by our, by our team. So like frankincense, we'll go down to Oman. We recently visited Taif for Rose. We went last year to, in 2021, to uh, Turkey, Isparta for the Rose. We went to Thailand, India. This next couple of weeks, we're going to Sri Lanka to distill Oud. So we go far and beyond to source the best ingredients out there. My role in the business is like a bit more creative side. So I'm not too much involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business, but my role is more in creating new products and looking at what the market needs. So what we do is we create unique collections. So in the year of the lockdown, we created the home and office collection, which consists of candles, reed diffusers, hand wash, sanitizers. We also created a very unique collection of pure artisan ouds. They consist of eight ouds based on the Gulf because the Gulf people use Oud a lot. So these Ouds are named after each country, like so Oud Bahrain, Oud Makkah, Oud Medina, and they are directly from distilleries in Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam. How we practice Ihsan in our business, no, there's two things. Number one is since 12 years, our main focus is providing good customer service and bringing products to the market that people haven't seen before and that people will appreciate. Money is always secondary because if someone buys the products, they will obviously pay for it. So if you came here a couple of days ago in our other branch, we had lines on all our store on Sunday. So what we did was we gave refugees oud boxes. So Alhamdulillah, one very big thing about us is we retail our products, but a lot of the profits, we put it back into the community. That's our personal choice, but what we realized throughout lockdown and what we've seen with refugees and people with you know a little bit less income they're always given food and clothes so we thought okay why doesn't someone give them something a bit luxury like oud and you know uh, a shampoo a shower gel a hair oil this is something they'll remember for the rest of their life so a couple of people mentioned it to a few others and there we had a big line in an all three four hour branches one gift box which we sell for 70 pounds in the store I can remember just a couple of weeks ago in one of the ISOC, you know, Islamic relief meals, it sold for £1,200. One of the senior lecturers bought it for £1,200 and then all that money goes to charity. So one thing we will never back out from is, you know, supporting the local community. So we always have, you know, uh, entrepreneurs coming here for advice, coming here to learn. Same with our Manchester Bradford stores. We have people coming for work experience. We put money back into the community through you know, regular donations through free gifts. So we have like 23rd till the end of Ramadan where funding, you know, free iftars for over 500 people. So in Medina Munawwara, we've been allocated gate number 17. So St. Salim will be doing iftar in Medina for 1,000 people every day, you know, in Medina. So through this business and other businesses, not just this business, we have other family businesses as well. We have orphanages in Pakistan. We have uh, orphanages in Gambia. So without probably this business, that would not be possible. So this perfume sort of brings people together. People like perfume, people want to smell good. And the biggest thing is, it's very, it was very dear to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, three things were very dear to him. One was, you know, oud and atar and, you know, scent.